This new movie uh, is uh, is a lot of fun, and uh, you are the director. Uh, Diablo Cody is the writer. Now, your first uh, success was, which was your first pretty much big film, was was Thank You for Smoking, which yeah. was uh, another favorite. And uh, the way to my heart is uh, smart writing. So I think we're two for two here. Oh, okay, great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> I mean, going to say teenage pregnancy, but... Uh... Well, no. No, then you would be one for two. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, you're, you're two for two on that. Now, I, I want to ask you first, how, seeing as how the first film is, uh, is, is poignant, funny commentary about s- the smoking lobby, and the second film, Juno, is uh, funny, poignant commentary about teenage pregnancy, uh, the pitch process, and I don't know if you're brought on first as a director before it's greenlit or what, or you're getting with the writer, but my guess is there might be a special challenge involved in pitching that when you say, now we're going to do something about a heartless uh, smoking lobbyist, but it's going to be hilarious, <laughs> or we're going we're gonna to do something about a chick who has uh, sex with her best friend and gets pregnant and doesn't know what to do, but it's a, it's a laugh riot. You That'd know? be funny if I had just lied on the sake of smoking. I'd said, oh, this is just a father-son story. Yeah. And then just <laughs> then when I went to shoot it, just added all the smoking stuff. Right, right. Uh, you know, Thank You for Smoking was a book by Chris Buckley, and uh, it was popular, but you're right. It was really hard to get that movie made. It took mm-hmm. about six years. Oddly, Mel Gibson owned it for over a decade and I wrote it for his company and finally got independent financing to make it. Juno, you know, was coming off of Thank You for Smoking and there was kind of a belief in my abilities as a director and it was a screenplay that people liked and, you know, it was actually quite simple. It got made very fast. Now, Juno's got a real interesting cast. Uh, Rain Wilson is in it and uh, he, to me, is developing an on-film quality sort of like Steve Buscemi. When I see him in a movie... I it makes me happy. I get excited, you know, because he's a guy who really brings a, a a solid and and but yet a really quirky quality to the film. And it seemed like it was no accident that he's cast as basically the first guy that Juno has to deal with in the form of a drugstore clerk mm-hmm. when she realizes she's pregnant. You hit it right on the head. I mean, that's exactly why he's there. I uh, I'm a huge fan of Rain. In fact, Rain's actually writing a movie that I'm going to direct him in that he's going to star in, mm. where he plays a ninja called Bonsai Shadow Hands. But when we had to cast this role, I thought, you know, if you see Rain Wilson at the top of the film, my guess is you're going to be confident. Yeah, it was like, what in the, the, the film, I thought, what if you're a teenage girl, what's the only thing worse than finding out that you've got an unwanted pregnancy? And it was it was Rain Wilson selling you the pregnancy test and then <laughs> talking to you as if he's Ned Flanders. From right, the, judging you the Sims, whole time. Right, yeah, yeah. Now, also, Jason Bateman is in the film. Mm-hmm. Um when when guys like uh, Rain Wilson do uh, The Office or Jason Bateman does Arrested Development, those that's television, but it's smart television. Is that a fast track to maybe getting cast in smart Hollywood films? You know, it's beginning to be that way. It's funny. I didn't realize until we had finished the film how many actors in Juno uh, derive from television. I mean, mm-hmm. even you know J.K. Simmons, who did Law and Order and the Oz, and Oz, and Jennifer Garner from Alias. Uh, I've never considered myself a huge TV fan, but apparently I am because I like to cast from there. You know, there's a thing that you know when you cast someone who's done a lot of television, which is they know how to move. Television works so quickly that yeah. when, you, when you work with an actor who's done a lot of television, you know they're a pro. They're going to be able to do tons of pages a day. And uh, I know there's a certain professionalism that they have. Uh, Jason Reichman is our studio is our guest here in studio on the Wild Ass Circus new film Juno comes out uh, December fourteenth. You uh, now d- tell me about uh, Diablo Cody the writer. I, I've uh, I've watched a lot of writers interviewed. I don't think I've ever seen one who looks more like they would be a shoe in as a suicide girl. Yeah, seriously, she's yeah. Uh, she looks exactly like a suicide girl. You know, she uh, was born in Chicago, moved to Minneapolis, and she became a stripper for a year and while See, I doing actually that, didn't know that you didn't know that okay. I was going with the suicide I girl figured thing. you were going okay bring up the stripper part I See, thought you're you in tune with smart television I'm in tune with Igdesiest. That's what it is. Right. Got, sorry, go ahead. Wow, I just wanted to pat myself on the back. I had no uh, yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, well done. Mazel tov. <laughs> you, you know, that's how many licks it takes to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. Um, she, um, she started writing a blog about her experience uh, as a stripper, yeah. and she had a great voice. She's really sharp, very funny, and it caught the eye of a Hollywood producer who actually just Googled a word a profane word that is in the name of her blog, uh-huh. and uh, and found her and said, hey, you should try writing a screenplay. And this was the first thing she ever did. She went to a bookstore, bought a published screenplay, said, okay, I think I know how to do this, and in eight weeks wrote a screenplay that within you know a couple years was a Hollywood film with almost zero development. So Juno is uh, it, it's smartly written and it's funny, but tell me if I'm very far off track here. I also thought it had kind of a... 
an incidental um, message to it, which is that, not to give too much about the movie away, but that sex with a friend Mm -hmm. can actually sometimes be more dangerous than sex with a stranger. Because Juno is hooking up with her best friend. Right. You'd think that's a safe thing to do, but it seems like with all the residual emotional attachment that comes with the unwanted pregnancy, that might be easier with a guy that you would actually have a hard time tracking down. Right. You know? <laughs> so is that what you're trying to promote on this show? Yeah. Sex with strangers? Well, you know, I take a different approach to life coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I never thought of that as the message that came out of this film. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I, I I always saw it more as a, a film about uh, the the loss of innocence that happens earlier and earlier. But perhaps this is a way to help young guys get laid. And, uh, you know, I applaud that. That's right. Me too, man. <laughs> we're, we're trying to build a career on it. Uh, what about Ellen Page, the star of Juno? Now, um, uh, her character in, in Juno, very, very sassy, uh, mm-hmm. off screen, very uh, introspective. I mean, she seems like that kind of young Hollywood personality that's that's so wise beyond her years. You can kind of almost only find that in, in Hollywood. What's the... Am I, yeah, I mean, she's that there. weird mix of, you're exactly right, she is wise beyond her years, she's very well-read, very articulate, and at mm-hmm. the same time, there's kind of the joyfulness of a young girl in there that kind of explodes every once in a while, mm-hmm. and that seemed to me the perfect match for Juno. But yeah, you watch her, and it's like watching Jodie Foster and Taxi Driver. You just kind of see her whole career opening up in front of her. Jason, last one for you here, um, and, and don't think, I mean, obviously we wanted to have you uh, come in and uh, promote the new film, Juno in Theaters, December 14th, but, but I also have a personal agenda. I need some professional advice. Okay. Monday. Yeah. I'm uh, making my on-screen debut. Who? I'm going to Shreveport. There's a, I don't know if you know a movie called Sorted Lives. No. Okay. This guy, uh, Del Shores, wrote it. It's a, it's a huge cult classic in the gay community. Mm-hmm. Well, it's turning into a television series on the Logo Network. Okay. So I got this small part, because I know the guy, mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, series. It just is a walk-on kind of thing. Yeah. Problem. I'm not gay. All right. Motivate me. Is your character gay? Oh, yeah. Big oh yeah, gay. yeah. I mean, I am. I'm a gay club guy. That's what I am. I'm gay. I think that's how they're crediting me. And I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain they're going to have me peddling ecstasy or something. But that that part I can work with. I, th- this other deal, I you know. My best honest advice. Yeah. Is the best gay characters I've seen on screen are the characters that are not trying to act gay. Okay. Whenever you see a guy who's trying to act gay and uh, is doing the Saturday Night Live version of gay. Um, it seems ridiculous. It seems like a joke. Um, and all my gay friends uh, speak and act nothing like that uh, right, stereotype. Right. So I would say the coolest way to do it is to just give one hint. I'd be completely yourself and then just have either one thing, whether it's one word that you say or, you know, you know, uh, just something, something in your clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe act just completely yourself, but just Put glitter under your eyes or yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah. See, and my problem is that you know, I the gay man only thinks of me as a friend, and I don't. I don't know what we're great friends, but in terms of, I would be the last guy to get a date on a Saturday night. So I don't know. You know, no, it, I, it, thank you, a, but it, trust uh, me, I think I've that's seen a it. presumption. But you don't know. There may be late night, you know, tube sock section I, sessions I, to I, you that you have no idea. About. I would. I would love that. Being as narcissistic as I am, just to know, you know, it, I could. But what I'm concerned about is I'm supposed to be sexy club guy. And you know the reality of it is. I think you got a lot going for you. Yeah. I think uh, I think I think it's just a couple choices, and wardrobe will probably help you. Body but, glitter might put me over the top. I get yeah, where you're going with that. I, yeah, I don't want to be rude. You might yeah. want to bring the hat you're wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice effect with the uh, with the soda there. Oh, <laughs> it, oh that I, I uh, took the drink after the joke. <laughs> yeah, it seriously, in. that was uh, <laughs> like Mort Saul. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was solid. All right, man. Well, I'm going to show up on set and inform uh, Del Shores, the director, that this is how Jason Reichman told me to play the part. Yeah, sure I don't want to say that I talked to an expert. But, yeah, right, right. Uh, well, thank you for that. I appreciate that uh, free advice. And uh, the new movie, uh, Juno, is in theaters everywhere December 14th. Lots of fun with a stellar cast. And uh, a message, 
May not have been the message Jason was thinking of, but yeah. I saw a whole other message. So uh, Whatever you take from it is fine as long as you give me your $8. That's right. <laughs> Go check it out. Uh, Juno, December 14th. Jason, so nice to meet you. Thanks for coming up hey, to the studio with us. Me, Love to talk to you again. All right. Thanks, man.